what's coming up for the Wood Horse Month starting on June 11th. Coming up right after this. Good evening, I am Lucky Lynx and this is the prediction for the coming month. Now, if you really want to know whether it's going to be a quote unquote good month for you or a bad month for you, that really depends on what your animals are. Each one of us has four animals and a whole lot of other stuff that goes into a Tibetan birth chart. Really, if we want to know what's going to happen to you personally, you have to personally get your chart done. So I'm going to do a basic overview of something that might happen, but then I've developed a specific and special reading for you all for this month based on Tibetan Mo. And I hope you like uh, this reading and it, it, I hope it's got a lot of stuff in for you. We're going to get to it right now. Let me just give you a quick overview. We are entering the Wood Horse Month. He's a very fast moving individual. He likes to be free. He's very strategic. He likes to show off. He is a show off. He likes good things. He likes nice things. Uh, he's, he's a consummate salesman. He's always moving. He's always trying new things. But he's up against the metal ox of the year. And I'm going to tell you the ox and the horse are not compatible and we all may be feeling that incompatibility in the energy of this month. Metal ox will want to slow the horse down. She's rebellious and slow moving and very much goes towards her goals and the horse is likely to feel stifled because he wants to get through to it. He wants to get to it fast. He's a fast thinker, fast talker and she's going to be like trying to hold him back and there's going to be we're going to feel that frustration between the two of them okay the one's going to be wanting to go and the, she's going to be stopping him okay so what it's likely to look at people are going to f want to be social and active probably heading for their goals and the energy of the wood ox is going to uh, hold it back so there's going to be tension people may be taking on a lot thinking that oh well i can get this done i can get this done and get this done and then they're going to feel like they're overburdened, like they took on too much this month, and the slow-moving ox may make them feel completely slowed down and overwhelmed. Like, why did I take all that on? So you may feel a lot of stops and starts this month, and another thing, um, you, your urge to be social or to connect with other people may be halted, people may cancel plans. People may be feeling that they're about to get back to normal or things are getting back to normal, and then all of a sudden some larger something calling it a self-authority is likely to stand in the way. That's just a very basic overview of how things might look. So like I said, I've, de I've developed a special reading though. So we know that that tension is going to be going on between the two. Okay, so that's the backdrop. That's the setting. Now I'm going to throw this reading in for you guys using the Tibetan Mo that I've developed on. This is a specific thing that I've done about some secrets that govern the way matter operates in this space and I've applied it to the Tibetan Mo and it's it gives me quite a bit of information. I've got 12 points here that I'm going to share with you for this month, okay? So um, what I rolled for the month is 2-6 or fire and metal. We also call that the uh, bright lamp, okay? It's also known as the bright lamp. So what is likely to come out of this. What, what's this likely to manifest as this month? Desire is likely to be building this month from inactivity or lack of change or ignorance of not knowing what we really are and knowing the truth of who we are, what we are, and why we're really here. here. So all sorts of desires may come up because of that, okay? That can drive us to do silly things or things that we don't really think about. We can overeat, for example, out of a need for comfort or indulge in bad habits or addictions. People pleasing, we can do a lot of people pleasing instead of getting the space we need. We can indulge in fantasy and then be surprised when we're suddenly shocked by what's real. We're hit with something that shows us our fantasy isn't really real and, and what's really going on. We see what's really going on, suddenly we're shocked and we're shaken. Um, so that's the kind of thing. All of these things can lead to clarity, though, if we take it the right way. So, for example, our fantasy comes up against reality. Boom, clarity can happen if we accept it. So how is this likely to come in and affect us? they got 12 points here. The first one. I'm going to start here with a question. What have you gotten in the habit of doing that's working against you? Okay. Some of you may be feeling 
this month that you've been doing the same thing over and over and over again and you're wishing for something new. The question is, do you want to invest your energy, your resources, your time, all that in the same thing that you always have and go with what's comfortable? Or do you really wish to melt what's stagnant in your life and replace it with something new? You have a choice. You always have a choice of how you direct your desires. Many of us invest in things that harm us. Some of us get in ruts and then numb it with eating or drinking or getting into bad relationships that cause drama. Uh, how do you use your desire to motivate you in a new direction? That's the question to ask yourself this month. It's just a question of taking the same desire that you're applying to the stuff that's not giving you the outcome you need and putting that desire into something that gives you the outcome that you really want. Or is it you've just gotten in the habit of doing what's standing in your way and that's good for you? So that's so we got to keep coming back to that question. What What have I gotten in the habit of doing that's not good for me? And just keep doing because it's easier to keep doing it, okay? Are you going through the motions with no passion? Take a new approach this month. What area of your life do you have the most passion in? And how can you take what, what you love from that and apply it to other areas in your life? So, for example, let's say you love comedy, you love humor. How can you apply humor to your work and your relationships and what happens when you do? Maybe you love reading cards. How can you use the card reading to structure your daily routine or use it to get your work done or use it in your work? Take what you're passionate about and use it to enliven what seems stale. Okay. Uh, this month, the heart is likely to be vulnerable. That means what you love, what you call home, your purpose. These are the most vulnerable this month. So knowing that ahead of time allows you to be prepared and so you don't have your breath taken away from you, okay? To strengthen yourself, try appreciating what you do have so that you don't find yourself suddenly in a place where you're losing what you were taking for granted, okay? What actions can you take to bring more compassion into your home, into your relationships, and to yourself? Remember, there can be no passion without breath. So... My question to you, are you actually breathing in your life or are you holding your breath because you don't really want to experience your own life? That happens a lot. I see that a lot from people. What can you do this month to get your blood pumping and your heart moving? Are you getting fresh air in terms of finding your purpose? This is a really interesting one. What body part do you normally use in your day-to-day -day activities? Your hands? Your legs? What happens when you change things up this month? Let's say you spend most of your time using your mind in your work or in your day-to-day -day stuff. What happens if you spend more time this month using your hands? If you sit, spend some time walking. What insight into purpose does this change in body part use bring you and how does that break up your routine and what new things come out of that because new things will come out of that um, my next point what other areas of life are affected by desires that are out of control how do our bad habits affect our relationships for example parenting our ability to focus clearly our sleep patterns so, for example, how does overeating or people-pleasing affect our dreams at night? How does what we're eating, sometimes when we overeat, sometimes we eat something that's not good for us, or we overeat something, or we're eating something that's, that's a bad habit, and an organ will go out of balance. And then we'll wake up every night at that time because it's that organ trying to tell us something. So if you're waking up every night at the same time, it may be that your liver's out and it's trying to tell you your gallbladder or your, your kidneys or your intestines, something may be trying. So what one bad habit do we have in one area of our life that our desires out of control that affects another habit. We like to think that everything is separate, but actually everything in our lives affects everything else. And if we take that into consideration this month, we can also gain more clarity. When you let your desire, this is the next point, when you let your desire get out of control in one area of your life, how does that affect or what other area of your life is always affected afterwards? This is a wild thing. People never make this connection. I had a client who had an addiction 
And every time he indulged in that addiction in one area of his life, he got a lawsuit in the other area of his life. Uh, I, I knew, I saw a woman last month, she was dealing with uh, a time. She had one area of her life that was out of balance and she kept indulging it and then she had no time. And then that affected the other area of her life, she kept getting into car accidents. Finally, she got into one that was so bad, she was like laid out for a long time. So again, when you let the desire get out of control in one area, what other area of our life is always affected? It's very interesting when you start to watch this. How might you use this month as a training gr ground for gaining greater clarity in your own mind and dispelling darkness? What if we take out the spooky whatever, I gotta do this, I gotta, okay. what if it's just, this is just a training exercise? What if we approach it as a training exercise to gain more clarity? What does that do for this month and how does that change the month that's coming? My next point, how much time do you spend over analyzing things how much does that lock things down for you? And what in, if instead of analyzing things this month, you saw life as an adventure and you just experienced the thrill of the, lot, of the ride? How would that change this month for you? To get the most out of this month, I suggest striking at the heart of the matter. Whatever the biggest obstacle for you is, if it's time, if it's money, if it's relationship, what's at the heart of each? Is it fear? Is it lack of focus? Is it shyness? What's the heart? What action to, can you take this month to strike at the heart? And if you need help, you can schedule a reading with me if you'd like to go into this more deeply. As a matter of fact, this particular reading I've developed, I'm doing it for people right now. It's just a basic half hour or hour reading. Tell me you want to do the reading that I talked about in this video. This is the 12 secrets. We can set up reading. I can apply this to any question, every any area of your life, and we can come up with all of these different areas to apply to the situation to get you help you to gain your insight. So if you need to get at the heart of something and, you, and you're not sure how, schedule a reading and we'll go over it. Uh, two more points. Since this is a horse month, I'm going to suggest that you work on being patient and maintain your breath, maintain your breathing so that you can see things as they're developing because there is no foresight without breath. And if we stay in the moment and we go with the horse, we're not thrown from the horse because of drama or someone's need for attention or a desire takes us in a direction and gets the horse to be skittish and goes off or a fear scares the horse and, and then boom, we lose. We're thrown from the horse or we are taken in a completely different direction from where we wanted to go. And then the final point, don't be afraid to break away from the crowd this month and do your own thing. Spend some time alone and see what it teaches you. I am Lucky Lynx, as always, wishing you success and good fortune in all that you do and wishing you a wonderful month of the Wood Horse. If you'd like to schedule a reading with me, like I said, I can do this reading for you or we could do your chart. I could do a Tibetan kill core for you, Tibetan magic, amulets, protection, love, whatever it is you need. Contact me. We can set things into motion. 779-302-8009 or conjure hope at gmail.com. Or you want to take a class from me, I've got some in tarot, crystal ball, Mexican lottery, a Lenormand, playing cards, bunch of classes. I've even got some mini classes that are really, really affordable. And because people ask me, can you do some cheaper classes? I did some really cheap classes on tarot. They're in my store, luckylinksfortune.com. If you go to the store, you can sign up for a class right there or contact me to ask me about the classes. Again, wishing you a great month of the horse. Take these things into consideration, apply them, use them. Let me know how things go and please comment and ask your questions in the space below.